OK, so last time we were just talking about this, we got all the way to the scalar dot product. And there was one of our final things that we got at the end. If you take the dot product of two vectors and the answer is 0, what does that tell you about the two vectors? They're perpendicular, very, very good. OK, so this now is going to connect back to our Cartesian equation of a plane. When we looked at the Cartesian equation of the plane, we had a diagram that looked very, very similar to this. I'm just going to jump back a few slides so that we can see the Cartesian equation of the plane. We said that the equation of the plane, we were interested in this normal vector. Do you remember why we selected a normal vector for a plane? What was interesting about a normal vector for a plane? It's unique, yeah, it's unique. If you think about the table and you, in your head, think of something that is normal to this table, you're all thinking of a multiple of the same vector. Whereas if I said, think of something that's parallel to this table, you're all thinking, probably, of something that's slightly different to everyone else. So that's why the normal is pretty useful, OK? And I told you this, and I said, well, you're just going to have to kind of believe me for a bit, OK? Just, I, I showed you this slide here that was like, yeah, OK, I guess that's what it's like in 2D. Maybe it's the same in 3D. Now's the point where actually I can say to you, this is true, OK? This is definitely true that we've got here. So it says, can we create a different equation of a plane using our new knowledge about the scalar dot product? So here is our plane that we've got here. I'm going to say this is our origin that we have. And I'm going to say that, I don't know, here's a point on the plane that we already know about. This is a particular point on the plane A. And we usually use, what letter do we use to represent any point on a line or any point on a plane? R. R. We would usually use R. So if that's the point that I know, and maybe I want to have some other point over here, a general point, which is, I suppose I should have done a dotted line here just to show it's going underneath the plane. So I'll do that now. So there's the point A. There's the point R. Um, what could you tell me that this point is here, from here to here? Um, let me just think about which way I want to do this, from this way. What do you think that vector at the top is? R yeah, it's R minus, R minus A. So this vector running along the top is R minus A. So if A is a... position vector of a point on the plane, and so is R. What can you tell me about R minus A? Good. And R, R minus A is a vector parallel to the plane. It's on the plane. So if you think about that blue plane that we've got there, it's like a table. And R minus A is like a pencil lying on the table. Whereas R and A separately are coordinates of how you get from the origin to that point, OK? Now let's see if we can take this a step further. What do we know about R minus A and N? They're perpendicular to each other, OK? R minus A is on the plane. This perpendicular vector is perpendicular to the entire plane. So um, we know. Any vector on the plane, r minus a, is perpendicular. Sometimes we use this, and we do like a little symbol to show it's perpendicular, and just write ar to say perpendicular. <laughs> Don't know why, it's just what we do. It just is meant to look like uh, this in bigger form, perpendicular. I was trying to save time, and now I've had to explain myself, so I could have just written perpendicular. Uh, we know that r minus a is perpendicular to n. Notice how I'm always underlining things when they're vectors, OK? So 
that must mean that r minus a dotted with n is equal to 0. Any suggestions of what you think I can do with the left-hand side? What algebra do you think you might be able to do if that wasn't a dot there? You got some brackets? You just expand it. Multiply it out, basically. So if you were to expand this out, the dot product is going to behave in that same way. You get r dot n minus a dot n is equal to 0. So you get r dot n is equal to a dot n. Usually, though, we write this as r dot n equals p. Have you noticed what I've done to p that I haven't done to the other ones? Or underlined. I haven't underlined it. Why have I not underlined p? It's not a vector. It's a scalar, OK? When you do a dot n, a is just three numbers n is just three numbers. When you dot product those three numbers and three numbers, you just get a new number, a constant that you've got here. OK? And I want to connect this back to what we have on what we did with the Cartesian equation. I think I've actually written most of this stuff on the next page here. Um, so I shall do that in a second. But what I'm going to do here, now r is a general point, OK? What could we call a general point? What, what might I represent it as if I want to write it as a vector? X, Y, Z. OK, so I've got R is X, Y, Z. N, the most general one that we've got here, is M1, N2, N3. And we've said that's going to be equal to just some number, P. So when you do the dot product here, you get n1x plus n2y plus n3z equals p, which is the Cartesian form. So they're the same as each other. They're just represented in slightly different ways. So this is the Cartesian form. Or this is the connection between the Cartesian form and the vector form. And I'll just kind of flash back to when we had that, just to make sure it's true. Here we go. M1x plus N2y plus N3z equals C. It's the same thing, apart from instead of the letter C, we've used the letter P there, OK? Don't want to go too far. It's just a, it's just a constant, that P. And that P is the A dotted with N. The amazing thing about this is that that a is just any position vector of something on the plane. But whenever you dot that position vector with the normal, you always get the same value of p, which is actually amazing when you really think about it. Like, how is it? I mean, it's any of these coordinates that you could pick on this plane. If you do the dot product, in other words, multiplying the i's, the j's, and the k's, and add them together with this normal, you always get the same answer, which is, I remember thinking, like, it just seems kind of weird that this was not weird, it's just how it works. Um, so we'll try and apply this a bit more. But the, the next page, actually, was really just adding some of these things into the diagram. So I think we'd already talked about some of this. This is just the same version here. So I've said n, n is for the normal, it's perpendicular to the plane. We're using r for a position vector of a general point. A was a fixed point on the line. It's the same thing here. And I've used the capital pi in the same way that we did for a, a plane that we did previously. And I've said here, we need to realize that n and a are fixed for a given plane. They are the constant vectors, whereas r can vary as it represents all the possible points on the plane. 
How could we use the dot product to find some relationship between a, r, and n? Well, we just said r dot n equals a dot n. That is the equation of the plane. The other form of that is r dot n equals p, and the other form of it is n1 x plus n2 y plus n3 z equals p or c. So those are the three versions of the equation of the plane. We've already come across an equation of a plane though before, haven't we, with vectors. Does anybody remember what that was called? You can look back through your notes after you write that down. Can you remember what the equation of the plane was, the other version of the equation of a plane? Yeah, do you remember what that was called? Because this is also a vector version as well. Um, it was one with a lambda. Yeah, it was with a lambda and a mu. Do you remember the net, what we call the lambda and the mu? They were, began with a P. Uh, Good, it was the parametric version of the plane. The parametric version of the plane looked like this. If I can find it. Remember this one? Did I say this was the best version or not the best version? This is not the best version, okay? The best version, I think, is, sorry for going back and forth so many times here, I think this is the best version. It's just really, really, really succinct and it just tells you everything you need to know. It just tells you what is normal to it, okay? And you can do way more maths with that than you can do with the parametric one. Yeah, Ishak? You absolutely need to know both of them because what they might give you is they might give you a plane and they might give you one, two, three coordinates and they might say, do this thing. And to do that thing, you might need to know this form. So to do that, you'd have to find a vector on the plane, a vector on the plane, find a normal to the plane with those two vectors and then put it in that process. This is just the most useful form, but you absolutely need to know all of the forms too. It's almost like learning... Um, like different bits of a language, like you need to be able to translate all of the grammar to be able to understand what the sentence is and that kind of idea, okay? Do you have a question? No? Okay. So, a couple of examples here. Um, pretty straightforward. It says a point with position vector 2, 3, minus 5 lies on the plane and the vector 3, 1, minus 1 is perpendicular to the plane. Find the equation of the plane in scalar product form and Cartesian form. Well, for A, we can clearly see that the position vector on the plane is 2, 3, minus 5. Uh, not B, sorry. And the vector that it's normal to is 3, 1, minus 1. So we're going to just do R dot N equals a position on the plane dotted with N. So R dot 3, 1, minus 1 equals 2, 3, minus 5 dotted with 3, 1, minus 1. So you get 3, 1, minus 1, and then we just dot product those two things together. And what do they dot to give? Six, seven, eight, nine, fourteen. So there's the scalar product form. Now we already know how to do part B. It says what is the Cartesian form. Well, I just showed you this before, the, the relationship between these two things that we've got. So you can either write x, y, z for r, or you can just say, okay, well, I've clearly got 3x plus y minus z equals 14. Yeah. You have found the constant, yeah. And I'll show you how it would be the same as finding the constant, okay? Now, if you pretended I didn't teach you about the scalar product and we just did the Cartesian form, 
you would have said, oh, okay, well, it's normal to this. So you would have said, if you're going to try and do the Cartesian, you would have gone like, oh, it's 3x plus y minus z equals c, wouldn't you? And this coordinate up here is 2, 3, minus 5. So what you'd have done is 3 times 2 plus, whoops, sorry, plus 1 times 3 minus 1 times minus 5 equals c. But look at what this is. It's the dot product. So you've been doing the dot product this whole time. So you just get that c is equal to 14, and you just come up with the same thing that we did down here. Okay. The reason this one is more useful than the parametric is it's unique. OK, of course, I could change the value of the 3, 1, and the minus 1. I could have done 30, 10, and minus 10. What do you think it would change about this? Times by 10, it would times by 10 as well. So you, if I had that, I would have had 30x plus 10y minus 10z equals 140. But come on, we can just it's the same thing. So we just know you can divide that. So this one is much more unique, which is better in many ways. OK, there are just a few very, very, very short questions on this. So two AC, three and four. We'll take a short break there and we'll just do these in our books really quick. OK.